Welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today we're going to be jumping back into an Ohio prison. I've already reacted to this documentary a little bit in the past, but it's over an hour long and usually videos like that get multiple parts. I'll leave part one pinned in the comments section for you to run it back, get a little recap. But if you enjoy this type of content, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave and check out the playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Today we're going to be jumping into the notorious Ross Correctional Facility in Ohio. prison can hold up to 2,037 inmates. The institution covers 1,700 acres and employed over 350 security staff. You don't want better for yourself. If you can't think for yourself, and you want the next man thinking for you, you're in the right place. Because people will run amok over you in here. This ain't about, you know what I'm saying, being tough. This is about using this and surviving prison. We're up here because we was in your chairs. And we actually give a shit about you. If you don't fix what got you here, you are coming back. See, one thing I didn't really like about these groups, because I've been to a couple of them. For the most part, it's inmates trying to teach other inmates what to do. Look, that ain't how it goes down. They need someone like me in some street clothes to show them how to make a YouTube channel. Show them what kind of equipment to get and stuff like that, you know? So this is the uncle you've been sending canteen money to, huh, Bobby? Why did that slow close-up of this guy's face remind me of the commercials with the sad puppies? Save a dog foundation type of commercials, man. They be shaking and dirty. Don't get it twisted, though. This guy's a killer. I made the best of this of a bad situation. It never changes. It's a routine. This man has done over 40 years in prison and only makes $17 a month. He's in charge of cleaning the captain's office, the bathrooms and stuff like that. And believe it or not, for him to be around the captain's area, period, shows that the institution trusts this guy a bit. I've done 40 years in prison. Thank you. That's that keefy yellow bag he's serving him. There's a world of difference in doing time from my first 20, 25 years than what it is today. It's a world of different. Yeah, I bet. Mopping ain't no different, though. When I started doing my time, you minded your business. You was either a, a man or you got killed, and I loved it like that. I wish it was back like that. Man or you got killed, and I loved it like that. I wish it was back like that. My dad would wake me up at 4 o'clock in the morning to get drunk with him. I was a cold-blooded alcoholic before I turned 13 years old. You know, a lot of people might hear that and think nothing of it, but really picture it. Your dad waking you up at 4 in the morning to come out there and start getting drunk with him. Your whole life would be changed, man, if you were to ask me. Of course, he's going to become an alcoholic. And, you know, I got family members that are alcoholics, and that's one thing that I don't wish upon nobody, man. It is. It's definitely bondage for sure. March of 1968. That's when I first went to prison. I was wow. 17 years old. I was out burglarizing, stealing everything I could. And I got out, I stole a state trooper's car and ran over top of him. Oh, that'll do prison. it. 
got out again. And I don't remember much out on drugs and alcohol. I killed another guy in a bar in Hamilton, Ohio. Oh, and he killed another guy. And I was given 15 to life for that. And I got out, uh, got out again. And that's going to be the last time he sees the streets. After killing two people and being released from prison for the second time, he ended up trying to rob an 80-year-old man. Old man wasn't trying to give up his hard-earned money, so homeboy stabbed him over 20 times. Luckily, he survived. When you stab someone over 20 times, you're trying to kill him. He ended up getting sentenced to 38 years for attempted murder. This man deserves every last second in the state penitentiary. Man been on this earth for 80 years. You want to try to rob him and stab him to death, man. That's crazy. Now, just as violent as he was on the street, so was he in prison. I did stretches in the hole for being drunk. I killed one inmate and stabbed another one. Violence to me, man, it's, it's, a, it's the answer in here. This guy, I can guarantee, if you put the pressure on him and he was scared for his life in prison, he will stab you over and over and over again. Guaranteed, man. If they turned me loose today, I, I'm telling you, I would be in your house tomorrow <laughs> because I don't know nothing else. Oh. Now, I'll honestly say it. Is if they keep you in this prison over 10 years, they should never release you. They wow. take you out there and shoot you or, or whatever. Girls but in a gallus, so shit but in a dealer. I held a gun but in a killer. Can I keep it any realer? Get girls but in a gallus, so shit but in a dealer. I held a gun but in a killer. Can I keep it any realer? Get girls but in a gallus, so shit but in a dealer. I held a gun but in a killer. Can I keep it any realer? Get girls but in a gallus. You know these are Smith and Wesson? What the hell? It's probably the last thing they actually make in America, huh? Handcuffs. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. They call me Squirrel, but my name's Dwayne. So we got Dwayne here, AKA Squirrel. And speaking of squirrels, I watched probably about 30 videos yesterday of people hypnotizing squirrels. I'm waiting to see a little squirrel prancing around my yard so I can try it out. But look, these people were doing nothing but this with their hands, little hand movement like this, not saying nothing. And they would walk right up to them, man. There's no way, I gotta try it. And I'm not asking y'all to try it, you know, I'ma try it, you know. Uh, I should never get close to wildlife without supervised help, SPCA, something like that. But if this works, I wonder why it does. This kind of mimics them running, I guess. Homeboy right here come a running from around the block, you do that. Before I was some little white kid that listened to rap and smoked a lot of weed. Came to the joint, I was probably about 130 pounds. I used to get whooped on because I had a mouth like I was 6'6". Six, six. I tried to adapt, you know, in the best way I could from being the person that I was on the streets and then coming in here and trying to be that same person, I, I found out quickly that wasn't gonna work, you know? I don't care what anybody says, if when you come to prison, if you're not in a gang or, or hang with a certain group of people, within six months, you're gonna, you know what I mean? Or, that's just how it is. I'll never forget the first time I seen some swastikas on someone, man. It was pretty trippy of an experience. Because until then, I ain't never seen nothing like that unless it was in the movies. But man, when you step foot in the penitentiary, you realize all that movie shit is pretty much reality and you know how some movies they like to dramatize things and make it look a little worse than what it is well prison is actually one of those places that you can't dramatize the amount of violence that happens in some of the establishments i mean they wouldn't even be able to put it in the movies i've brought so many stories y'all's way from across the country of people gutting people skinning them alive tying their tongues around their neck all kinds of shit. in a prison cell their cellmate that they were probably cooking and cleaning with for the last two years. Yeah, it's just like the movies and then some. Teenagers, all these guys now, these tattoos on their face and stuff, they, they don't know when they get 50 and 60 years old, their skin starts to wrinkle them old tattooed men. They don't realize that right now. Yeah. When I, I, I was out for a while there, and, and, and I felt like a freak or looking like this. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like that now. Even though old head's done some psychopathic stuff in his past, he's still pretty right. 
those tattoos are gonna shrivel up look crazy as hell when you get old but when i first got out i embraced my tattoos man girls were loving it i used to have my shirt off 24 7 and now i feel like people are looking at me just like homeboy said a freak or looking at me like i'm up to no good or i'm a criminal still and back then i might have wanted that wanted people to fear me see the tattoos and know where i've been but now i don't really care for that shit at all they still look kind of cool even though they're ugly as hell but still i regret a lot of the tattoos that i've gotten but one thing i don't regret is choosing to never join a gang look when you get into these type of environments you're gonna be peer pressure not really to join anything but because of your situation you're gonna feel like that's the best route for you to take you don't have to take that route i'm here to tell you Trust and believe if you join an organization, the drama level is going to go through the roof. You're hardly ever going to be able to relax. You're always going to get caught up into something. Not to mention, you're going to have to follow up with that for probably the rest of your life. I'm not going to hide anything that, you know what I mean, that I went through, or, you know what I mean, did while I was here. It's a part of who I am now, but at the time it felt necessary. But now thinking back, it might not even have been necessary. Man. We're gonna wrap it up right there though, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Like I said, I'll leave part one pinned in the comment section below for you to run it back. But stay tuned as always, I got plenty more content coming y'all's way. About to do some interviews right now. I'm actually running a little late, so I gotta go. In the meantime, I salute to every last one of you been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.